No pressure, no drama, just good times on burgers. 20 minutes later. Oh my god, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> Hello my beautiful little Pichavoonies and welcome back to a new video and actually to the first episode of our kind of like suburb spin-off series. It's gonna be like the OG Broken Dream, it's just gonna be a couple of episodes long, just something a little bit different and of course it's gonna be kind of focused around little Noelle Calorie Aiken, Al Arabi, Collins? No, not even Collins, Street. Street I guess her name is because she has left home, she has had enough. She can't deal with the babies anymore. She can't deal with the mum's new boyfriend anymore. She can't deal with the fact that everybody else seems to have a dad figure in their lives, living at home with them. And she ain't got squat. I mean, she's got Asha, but with Asha being like so involved in the twins, she's just kind of like, no, enough is enough. And leaving Lisabur, and I'm gonna go to the city and I'm gonna run away from home and just kind of sort things out on my own because I'm a teenager and I can deal with anything. So she has run to the city to the Culpepper Apartments where where Jamie is currently living with his flatmate Kylie Sass. He's been living there for quite a long time and she he is of course the um, biological father of Noelle. He's kind of he's, he's always been there but he's not really ever been super there so I don't think she fully knows him quite enough but he has been willing to be like okay it's fine come live with me I'll come and sort things out. He's phoned Charlie Rose and he's phoned, well he's just phoned Charlie Rose, he didn't phone Asher, that might be a little bit awkward. But he has phoned Charlie Rose so that she at least knows where Noelle is. And now, we are gonna head into the city for the first episode of our Sims 14 Runaway. If you guys are excited for this, don't forget to give it a little cheeky thumbs up. Let me know what you want to see from the series in the comments below. I'm gonna chat about some of the stuff that you guys have already thought of, I thought of in this episode. So watch out for that and give me your reactions, opinions and whatnot. And also don't forget to share this video with anybody that you think men like it and guys let's play some sims 4 teen runaway also i'm sorry if it's still a little bit echoey i literally just spent like 200 pounds on stuff to put on the walls to try and stop the echo i've been putting it off because i've been like maybe i don't need to do it but like clearly i need to do it because i sound like i'm in i don't know a tin box it's ridiculous it is kind of ridiculous so here are our little three musketeers we have Jamie here chilling, having himself a little salad, looking sort of angry. He's in a bit of a bad mood. We've got Kylie here, who's actually late for work, and she's off to go dance rather than do work. Kylie, I'm going to have to tell you to go ahead and go to work, please. And then we've also got this one who oh, is definitely bara. feeling a little bit tense. She is in familial distress. She needs to, from being near family, she needs to escape this family, even though it's literally just her dad who is like so tense about things that he is just hanging out in the other room. Oh my gosh, she's literally just gone and sat in here. So we kind of know already that Noelle is just as much of a tough teenager when she's out in the city as she is when she's at home. And Jamie's also noticing a bad smell in the apartment, which obviously isn't great. I'm trying to see if I can call the landlord and sort that out, but I can't. This apartment is actually classed as a fixer-ripper. So you get a lot of bad smells and grossness. It's actually the apartment that was the first ever episode of In The City, which was uh, James and Salma. James moved out here, Salma moved in shortly after. And this was actually their apartment when they first moved in. So. Here is the current room situation. Oh, and I just, I literally just watched a rat crawl under Jamie's bed and now it's gone back under the side table. That's pretty gross. You know what? I, I'm kind of sick of this fixer up and on. Oh, it cannot be removed. It actually cannot be removed. Wow. I was gonna do a little bit of cheating and remove it there, but apparently I'm not allowed. So this is Jamie's room. I actually like this apartment a lot because he's got these like cool sliding doors that he can just open and just kind of look out into the city. They live in like what I assume is quite like a hipstery sort of area. You've got like the lofty kind of apartments over there. You're right next to like the square down there, which is like quite sort of an artsy sort of fun area. You've got the little karaoke joint. You've got a little, is that like a restaurant? It's an art gallery. It's quite a trendy place to live. So he looks out across all of that. This was meant to be Noelle's room and this was meant to be Kylie's room. But one of the first things Noelle did when she moved in here and plonked her homework there and sat in that room doing a little bit of eating is basically just saying, no, 
This is my room. You're late for school, Noelle. I don't care if you've run away from home, you still need to go to high school, okay? She's losing empathy online, which I know means she's trolling the forums as well. She literally just walks straight up and is like, no, dad, this is my room. I want this room. It's bigger. It's pinker. It means I'm not next to you in your room, and I don't want to be hearing what's going on in your room. Like, dad, this is my room. I'm moving into this one. And I don't care what you say. So poor Kylie has literally been kicked out of her room straight away, which is interesting. She also brought home 77 simoleons today. Good effort there, Kylie. Kylie has apparently never had any romance in her life ever. And also doesn't know that many sims. Why are you like the least social sim I've ever known? I believe she's also like a film critic. Oh no, she's currently just a paper, a paper deliverer. Why don't while we're in here, we'll try and sort Kylie's life out. Because I feel a bit mean that I just sort of made her and I've just sort of dumped her and just been like, I don't really care what happens to you, friendo. <gasps> and oh my gosh, you guys, Noelle's even playing up in school. Her last math test was not her best work. She got a so-so grade, which could really bring down her average. Should she ask to do some extra credit or just try hard to get the perfect grade next time? I don't really think she'll want to do any extra credit work, guys. I just don't think she cares enough. So I'm going to get her to work harder instead. Noelle studies like mud and practices like mud and greatly improves her grade on today's test. It turns out her reward was di directly proportional to her effort, so she has got a small performance boost. However, she's only doing okay in school. She's on a grade B, but that could go downhill if she doesn't actually start trying to work a little bit harder. However, I feel like Noelle will be trying to build her posse rather than actually do any work, so I'm gonna get her to make friends while she's at school. As soon as she gets home from school, she's got a call from the principal. I think this is gonna be about her mediocre performance. However, she's taking selfies of herself instead of answering the phone to the principal. Noelle, what are you like? The principal said that her school performance is pretty shaky. If she's not careful, she could drop a grade. Noelle. However, instead of doing anything to do with her school grades, she has a little posse that's come home from school with her. Everybody literally has matching outfits on now. Or should I say, everybody has copied Noelle's outfit because, you know, she is like the trendsetter sim. If these guys are like the mean girls, Noelle is definitely like, is it your Regina George? She is the one that everybody is copying. Copying. She is the one that decides what's trendy and what's not. And so her little mean girls have definitely copied her in what to wear. They've gone for the no tights look though, which means this happens, which ain't great, is it? Also, she looks weirdly pregnant, but she's definitely not pregnant. I don't know if it's just her body shape. So this girl as well is actually called Luna. We know quite a lot of Lunas now. This is Luna de Cruz. And then of course we've got Grace who she met last episode. And this is literally like her little posse with the matching outfits on, talking about all their stuff together. Uh, meanwhile out here, Jamie is literally enraged about the rat problem. I think you need to complain to your landlord, Jamie, because it's pretty rough and the rat is in your room as well. I'm pretty sure there's like two rats in this. Yeah, there's one there as well. And now poor Jamie is trying to get a little bit of shit eye after his day at work. And all the girls are in here just having a little dance to their pop music, basically not letting poor Jamie get any sleep at all. Poor Jamie, I don't really think you knew what you got yourself into. When you agree to let a teenage girl move in with you, because they're not easy. So Jamie's kind of been like, if you're going to be all crazy, can you at least guys go to the karaoke bar? So Noelle's invited everybody out and she's also invited around Frendo Kari, who is actually looking so different to the rest of this pack at the moment. And if you guys remember as well, there's a little bit of jealousy going on between these two because Kari has kind of got herself a boyfriend already. She invited him camping it for her little brother's birthday. Noelle did not get an invite and it's kind of a little bit tense between these two now. They're sort of frenemies, I would say at the moment. Oh, and Anthony's come along as well. Anthony's like, you know, my girl's a little bit young to be in a karaoke bar. I'm gonna make sure that you're actually... Oh, she's off to go chat with Ryland. Literally, Lilith's just broken up with Ryland. What are you doing? But I like how Anthony's like, no, I, she's not allowed to come here and drink. That's just no. She she will have a pop and I will keep a close eye on her, okay? Oh, she's having a flirty, funny conversation with Ryland. Well, she didn't wait around long, did she? So while these guys have all actually got drinks, poor little Carrie has just got 
a little juicy juice pretending to be a drink. Which, oh my god, look, she's teasing her, saying you've got a baby's bottle, you've not got a drink like the rest of us. Literally, she's just teasing Kari in front of all of her friends. And now she's getting involved too. Oh my god, and she's clapping the other girl teasing her. Look how impressed with herself she looks now. Oh my gosh, poor little Karuni. She's like being pressured to conform by these guys. And I just don't really think that she wants to become a mean girl. She does not want to put on her little two-tone skirt and uh, and jumper and join this mean girl posse. So it's 12 a.m. in the morning and Noella's made all of her friends stay out this late. I'm poor little Carrie. I think Carrie is like realizing that this is way too late. And she needs to go home. And Jamie, this is the point where you're meant to be telling your daughter to go home as well. Instead of just sat at home. Literally raging so hard about the rats. Actually, he seems a little bit more chill now. I think the landlord has come along and sorted out the rat problem. So he's a little bit calmer, but can you please go ahead and tell Noelle to get her butt home, please? Come on, Jamie. You're going to have to do a little bit of parenting, okay? Put the tablet down. Where are you going? Are you popping the tablet down? Okay, you're popping it down in Noelle's room. The fear is there. He's like, I'm going to parent Noelle. But I'm gonna make sure that she knows I haven't taken a tough look because she's really scary. And he is gonna go out and say, tonight you should have been doing your homework instead of going out with your friends, okay? Can you do your homework? And she's like, no, I ain't doing my homework. What are you gonna do about it, dad? <laughs> Guys, I'm kind of scared of Noelle. <laughs> I don't know what you do with Noelle. Oh my gosh, she's literally even angry about being told about the homework. Even though she's got no intention of doing it. And in fact, she's coming into this room in front of them all and just being like, yeah, can you guys shut up? And I'm, I want to watch sports, okay? I'm going to turn off your, your music so you can't even dance anymore. They're both like, bye, have we agreed to this? <gasps> Jamie just turned the TV to kids. Like, if you're going to act like a kid, you're going to have to watch TV like a kid. <laughs> she's having a little bit of a rant to him now. About all the problems of being a teenager. Oh my god, she needs to sit differently. The thing is though, I think I think Jamie might not have great parenting skills. But he is like quite a cool adult. Maybe she'll kind of respond to that a little bit better. Or at least I'm kind of hoping she will anyway. They do seem to at least get on fairly well. Oh, and then she just starts raging. Be yelled at. What caused that yelling? Ah, I can't keep up with her. Oh man, she is tough. She's just a tough cookie to be around. And it's 2 a.m. in the morning. Jamie, I know you're new to this whole parenting thing, but you need to let your kids go to bed at a more reasonable hour, okay? Also, Noelle spent a hundred pounds on drinks at everybody tonight when the household funds are literally only at 700. Well, 650 now. Not ideal. And the rat is back, Jamie. I kind of feel like you're gonna have to just obliterate it if you can. I know this is so harsh, but <gasps> he can't, he can't because the bed's in the way. I bet the landlord can't get rid of it either then. Eh, this is so gross. Yeah, the landlord can't reach it either, you guys. Not good. So poor Jamie is literally just enraged. He's not having a good time. Noelle's not having a good time. Nobody's having a great time. And Noelle's clearly still really salty about Carrie in her relationship finding happiness. If she's literally... Oh, look at... She even sleeps distressed. She even looks all tense and worked up as she's sleeping. I think she's just... She's literally got a lot of Charlie Rose's jealousy, I would say. Look at him. Jamie's trying to do the right thing. Cooking up a little bit of breakfast for them. Doing a little bit of scrambled eggs and bacon, thinking... This will be nice. This will help her, like, have a really good start to the day. Oh, Kylie's running out of newspapers to deliver. Oh, we don't mind too much about you and your life, my love. <laughs> but look at this. Scrambled eggs and bacon. Well, do you want this to start your day? Uh, no, Dad. Why would I want to load myself up with that much saturated fat at this time of the morning? I'm going to have my nice yogurt, okay? Awkward. She's a tough cuckoo, isn't she? Oh, she has at least come to come and sit yeah. with them, though. So there's at least that little bit of niceness. Whenever she's nice to him, he's so like, oh my god, I can't believe she's actually been nice to me. Ah! Jamie, I hate to break it to you, but if you wanted a better relationship with your daughter, maybe you should have been around a little bit more at the impressionable age of her life. You know what I'm saying? Also, what is this freak doing here? Just go away. Just go away. Be gone. Stop dancing. And Noelle's late for school again. 
great. So Noelle is heading into school. I am gonna ask her because she refused to do her homework. I'm gonna ask if she will at least study hard for the first half of the day, okay? She didn't even eat her stupid little yogurt or anything. Then little Jamie has work in two hours. All you have to do is play video games for your job. Oh, and he's getting sick. Why don't you come in here and do a little bit of video game playing, okay? It's a pretty easy thing to do for your job. It's basically what Ali used to have to do. Really, really nice and easy. And of course, we know from Broken Dream that now that Lily Bear is back on the market, her and Jamie have always had this weird sort of a bond. Like, I don't, they've never done anything. I don't even know if they've ever kissed. No, they've kissed. They've kissed. But that's all they've ever done. And they sort of have this, I don't know. A little bit of a, a sort of cheekiness about them. You cannot do this while a sim is aging up. Who's aging up? I can't see any aging up going on. What lie? But now that Lily Bear's back on the market, Jamie has definitely kind of thrown his heart into the mix. But we do know that Lilith has met another sim. She has met Akira, who's actually Delagrissi's sim. If you guys haven't watched her videos, watch them. They're amazing. She's amazing. She does sim stuff like me, and it's amazing. And her sim Akira is amazing. Like, amazing. He is absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. Lilith met him, and they got on really well. Like, they had a good laugh. They had a good chat. But she is a lot younger than him. I'm kind of thinking maybe she he might be someone a little bit more better suited to somebody like Noel because I know that Kira's meant to have a little bit of a bitchy side to him too. A little bit of a cheeks to sort of side and Noel definitely definitely has that so the two of them could work quite nicely together but there needs to be some link like they can't just randomly meet each other. There has to be some link between them which might end up being Lilith. Oh and now that Lilith's working hard she's actually getting picked on for working hard in school. Should she confront them with a witty comeback or just ignore them? Well, it's Noelle. She's gonna confront them, isn't she? Which has actually given her a performance loss, which I think Noelle would instantly be like, well, forget this then. I'm not working hard in school anymore. I'm gonna get targeted by bullets if I do it, and I don't even care that much, so why would I do it? Do you like my Noelle impression, by the way? I should really do it as my Marula Snide from, um, the Hogwarts mystery, which is like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. I don't want to work hard in school. But I can't do that all the time because it hurts my throat. Also, she might be going through a little bit of a difficult teen time, but I don't think that she's actually Marula Snide, you guys. Not yet, anyway. Oh, no, Kylie's been promoted to a story researcher. We'll keep helping her with a little life. She can go ahead and write a column for herself. And Noelle is back home and has... Yet another call from the principal. Why are you mortified? She's having a mood swing as well. Two calls from principal two days in a row. And look at this. Her school performance is actually poor at this point. I don't even know how she's still a grade B student because I kind of feel like she doesn't deserve to be. And look at this nonsense, nonsense walking she's doing right now. Wow, what is this? Kylie's been promoted in her job. She's like celebrating. She's poured herself a little drinks platter. She's wanting to know if everybody wants to come out for a drink tonight. And this one is just like, no, I have to do my stupid homework. I hate my life. I hate the babies. I hate everything. Oh, look at this. Look, Kylie's going to go and help out Noelle with her homework. She's trying to be, she's trying to help her out, you guys. Maybe Kylie had a little bit of a difficult teenhood as well. I don't know, but she's, she's trying. Bless anybody that approaches Noelle and tries because it's a very scary thing to do. I mean, look at that miserable slash scary face. You've got to be pretty brave to come up against that. Oh, wow, she's actually peaced out. Great. Good help. Although, there you go, Noelle. You're about to complete the first homework I think I've ever seen you complete. And she's come back in to help finish you off with it. Look at that. Say thank you to her, okay? There we go. Like, at least these two are kind of getting on. This one is actually mortified. She's so embarrassed that she's ready to curl up and die. Literally. Like, we need to help with this. Oh, she's even hitting her own head. Oh my gosh, what just happened then? Did you guys see that? What just happened? She got like this weird thing. Do I need to get her out of this mood ASAP? Could we be in for some trouble? Come in, Jamie, and talk her through a mood swing. Give her some loving hugs. He has been promoted as well. And look at this. Little Charlie Rose is asking if they all want to go to the Spice Festival together. I actually think this could be quite a nice idea, a good way for them to link back up again. 
But also, it might help poor Noelle because I've never seen a Sim do that before and I really don't want her to die. And it's Kylie's birthday, so we can kind of make it a little bit of a thing. Oh, look at him and Kira. Here we are, Kira getting quite well. We can, it's Kylie's promotion day, so we can kind of use that as a good little way to, I don't know, sort of celebrate it, I guess. Oh my gosh, everything he's trying to try and make her feel better is just not helping. And I think this will be the first time that she's actually seen Charlie Rose since she decided to move up from the home. And rather than going saying hello, she's actually hiding in bed. Like, Noelle, what are you even doing? Why are you just sat there hiding in bed? You're meant to be going to the Spice Festival together. Oh, and Charlie Rose, I think, is just saying a little bit of a thank you there. Two ex-best friend o Jamie for taking a run. But oh my gosh, guys. She is so much work. Oh my gosh, this is good. Okay, chatting with um, Charlie Rose has helped her get off the mortified mood and into the confident mood. Even if it does mean that she's been a little bit mean to her to do it, it is at least helping. By the way, did you see Jamie Street then with his head just being like, this is too much, I have the worst headache. This girl is actually making me sick right now. Oh no. And now these two have somehow devolved into arguing with each other. But the thing is, being mean actually makes her happy. Because she's a mean sim. So she's invited, well Charlie Rose is over here to try and make things better. They're just arguing. Jamie's like, I need a drink. I literally need a drink to try and handle this right now. This is a little bit much. I'm gonna get him to, dis to express disappointment in arguing to her. Because he can't just sit there and do nothing. At some point, Jamie, you have to be a bit more of a parent, okay? So he's gonna tell her that he's disappointed that she's arguing. And it's actually improved her conflict resolution. And he's gonna ask her now, like, you need to stop being mean. You can't be mean like this all the time, okay? You need to start trying to be a bit of a nicer sim. Okay, I think she's sort of listened to him a little bit. And she's having nice conversations with Charlie Rose at least. Oh, no, what are you doing now? No, you're back to being mocked. Oh, Charlie Rose is mocking you. Oh, guys. They're really tough. They are actually really tough. Oh, poor Kylie. I feel sorry for her. Her whole sort of, let's go out and sort of my, break, my promotion turn to, let's have a complete domestic. In fact, Charlie Rose still looks pretty mad to me. And she's over there trolling the forums instead of making any effort to chat with her mum. I, I kind of feel sorry most to think of all in this for Jamie, who's had this tornado of craziness just smash through his whole life and give him this never-ending headache. In fact, Noelle, do you mind maybe ordering him a little bit of medicine? What do you say? There you go, James Bob. That's a little better, isn't it? So I'm hoping that these guys are gonna try and be able to make things up just a little bit before Charlie has to go home. Even if she's not ready to move back home yet, it would be nice if they could at least have, you know, a little bit of their relationship starting to repair. Oh, guys, she's so tough, though. Even when I tell them to do nice interactions, they still end up managing to argue. They're both pretty fiery sims. Okay, that's a little bit better. At least they're doing like nice hugs and stuff. That's made me feel a little bit better. I do think it's time for this one to get her bed to bed though. So it's a nice Saturday morning. Jamie's up pretty early doing something on the PC, socializing, I think, chit-chatting away on the PC. Noelle's still getting her beauty sleep. She actually, she actually looks calm in her sleep for once ever. And I'm kind of thinking, one, it was nice that Charlie Rose came around and that she at least got to chat with her a little bit more yesterday. Also, whenever Jamie and Charlie Rose have a, an, what is the toilet roll doing there? Whenever they have an interactions and it's just nice sort of friendly interactions, makes me pretty happy. Uh, you guys, like some of you, he's sick again. Oh my gosh, the poor guy. Literally, Noelle has given him a constant oh. headache. Some of you guys love Jamie Street. Some of you guys hate him. I think good characters make you feel strongly about them, so. Even if you hate him, I think it's almost good that he's at least, you know, driving that sort of emotion in the series. He has a lot of tattoos. Like, look at his, uh, oops, wrong way, his back tattoos. Pretty intense tattooage going on right there. <laughs> and I'm thinking maybe he wants to spend his Saturday bringing Noelle out somewhere, doing some nice sort of wholesome dad stuff, 
trying to get her in a bit of a better mood. You need to take your medicine, Jim Bob. Like literally, Noelle being here is making you so ill. And I was also kind of thinking, since Jamie and Akira seem to have this newfound sort of, they're starting, they're friends. They are literally actually friends. There was me thinking that they were seeing each other as rivals, but maybe they weren't at all. Oh my God, she literally won't even eat her breakfast in the same room. She's such a brat. She's such a brat. I think they're actually seeing each other as friendos. Maybe he wasn't jealous of Lilith's fr friendship with Akira at all. Maybe because Akira was a teen and everybody else was seeing that except me, you know? Maybe he's kind of thinking Akira could be- it could be nice for Noelle to not just hang out with this miserable sort of squad of girls like her that are just making her meaner and meaner than ever. Maybe we need to get her out the house and meet some nicer people. Maybe Akira could be a nice boyo for her to meet. So he's grabbing himself a little bit of brekkie and he's gonna see if Noelle fancies- Noelle seems in a better mood, she's smiling, she's happy. Oh my gosh, the mood swing could be over and she's actually washing the dishes. He had to put his fork down there because he was actually so shocked. Oh no, now she's tense about me being near her family again. It sounded too good to be true. Although she has come over to ch chat with him, make funny faces with him. That's good. So I think Jamie has an interesting group of people that he thinks should go ahead and get together today. Akira, Noelle, and Lily Barasaurus Rex. Pretty strange group, but also if you think if you think about it, actually quite a smart group. But no start smart squad. They're different. Don't get them confused, okay? Keep up. Keep up. So I think we go to the nice new firewood bar and grill. It's not a romantic location, it's not a vibe, it's a bit more chill. Get a burger, have a chat, enjoy the sunshine and sit outside. A very relaxed -y kind of meal, which is exactly what I'm going for here. No pressure, no drama, just good times and burgers. Always good. Oh, the first problem is it's in the shed. <laughs> oh no, it's all unraveling. It is all unraveling. Never mind. Let's just go ahead and see what we can do. And all for God's sake, why does she have to go and sit on her own at the other end of the table and just not really engage with everybody else chit-chatting? So what I was thinking is we can get these two to get introduced. But also, if you guys remember, Lilith had a phase where she could get kind of close. So it been a, a bit of a crazy teen. She pulled it back in, but she could be quite a good person to give little um, Noelle some advice. Try and let her lighten up a bit. Try and not make her think that high school is something that needs to be conquered and something that can be enjoyed instead. So I actually think these guys have more in common than they think. And I also think that cuz Lilith's kind of a little bit of a cooler, she seems a bit younger. She's a little bit like, like you want to be Lilith. It could be quite a good person to try and get through to this one. And I'm also going to get Jamie to kind of introduce. Oh look, he's she's well happy about that. Oh, she definitely likes little Akira Rooney. I'm going to get Jamie to kind of introduce who she is and kind of chit chat with him a little bit. So this is good. He wants to go straight in there with the compliments to her. I spoke to Noelle and I find her quite pleasing. That's nice. Now we need to do like the opposite way around, which is ask Noelle how she's kind of feeling about Akira Rooney. <gasps> A thumbs up. That's good. I like Akira. He's pretty cool. Oh my gosh. We've actually found something that he likes. That she likes. Sorry. Why don't you go ahead and do a nice little chit chat with her, okay? Oh my gosh, Akira is a high school student at Buckingham High, which is the same school as her. Oh my gosh, she's actually very happy. Which is pretty amazing. Which is very smart for little Jay Marooney, because now these guys are chit chatting away, having fun. He can kind of go over and chat a little bit more with, uh, with the Lilith and see if there's still anything there between the two of them. Oh wow, she seemed pretty happy to get whatever little text, little secret WhatsApps going on across the table there. Oh wow, look at these two go. It seems like there may be a little bit of, it might even just be jokey romance for now, but there's a little bit of romance going up between these two again. Oh my gosh, she's seen these two flirting and then she's boasted to him about messing around. She ain't never messed around in her life, you guys. I don't think she's ever been kissed. So she's literally just bigging herself up here and sort of telling lies. Oh wow, Akira just became good friends with Noelle. That happened pretty quickly. I honestly think he's just like kind of quite an easy sim to get along with though. Oh, and look at this. 
Of course we have little Max here. Oh, is that Jake? Lucia Jones. I thought that was like Jake's sister. I'm actually not sure if it is. But Max is always there doing some kind of secret agent in, isn't he? And also, can I just ask, what is going on with our food? What is taking you freaks so long with the food? Why does Max get his food before we get ours? That's not fair, we've been here way longer. So Noelle's not an idiot. Maybe she's kind of spotting that Akira I think Akira does sort of have a little bit of a teeny sort of crush on uh, on little Lily Bear. I reckon Noelle knows all about that as well. Akira's whining about heartbreak. So maybe seeing these two flirt is actually making him feel a little bit heartbroken. But Noelle has a pretty cheeky plan for how she can make sure that Akira only has eyes for her. And she's going to encourage Lilith to hook up with our dad, Jamie. Cause she knows that there's a bit of flirtation there, but also because it means that Akira only has eyes for her. <gasps> Lilith just became the girlfriend of Jamie. Thanks for setting us up. Jamie and I are going out. Oh my gosh. No one is a little meddler. I didn't even know you could do that. I didn't know you could literally make them go out just by doing that. So they actually set to being boyfriend. <gasps> oh my gosh, Noelle. She is fully, fully mixed right now. And she has actually got, she's actually made them become boyfriend and girlfriend. I didn't know you could do that. I actually didn't know you could do that. Oh my God, what have I done? <laughs> wow. So that is not the way I saw things going. Also, I'd just like to point out that it's 5.30 PM and their food literally has still not arrived. This restaurant is so glitched, but Noelle has her ways of Getting what she wants and one of them is just to tie up certain people to leave things through free for her She's like I'm not having another Carrie and Tyler situation I'm interested in Akira and I'm gonna make sure that I'm the only one that he's interested in so Guys, we've also already had a lot of drama in teen runaway one thing that you guys have been asking about a lot is you want there to be some sort of potential pregnancy storyline with this while Noelle is still a teen. Another thing that I was thinking is kind of interesting that we've never done before is if we go down that route that she wants to... Oh look, her friend apparently knows who Akira is and knows that he's cool. If she does go down that route, I think it could be kind of interesting to do it as like something that she's trying to keep a secret from everybody. So she starts wearing baggy clothes. She won't tell anybody who the father is. Maybe we don't know who the father is. But also, we've never had a pregnancy storyline that ended up in that person deciding that the right thing to do was actually to give that baby to a family who potentially would be able to raise it better and give that baby up for adoption. In my game, if a baby is given up for adoption, it doesn't just disappear. Because of MC Command Center, the baby will actually be adopted by another family in Sims. So if she did that, she could end up meeting them like generation down the line, like when that child is like a teenager or a child or an adult and getting to see it that way instead. I think that could be potentially a very interesting way to go. If you guys agree with me and you like that idea, let me know in the comments below and also let me know what you think about Jamie and Lilith being brought back together by Noelle's meddling. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, the first ever episode of Teen Runaway. If you like some of the ideas that I talked about at the end of this episode, please let me know. There's a lot I want to get you guys' opinion on, so make sure you give me all of it in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in another episode. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.